All right, we're still in volume one of this book, or the series of books. Uh, we're now at part three, story six, beginning again. And let's get started. Now come, now came the great moment of, wait, okay. Like I said, I kind of have trouble with reading sometimes, and that's why they never called on me in school, because things jump on me, and sometimes my brain don't fall in my mouth. Okay. Now come the great moment for which all in the ark have been waiting so long, waiting so long, the opening of the great door that God had closed. No doubt Noah and his three sons tried to tried to roll it back. At last it cracked open, as if moved by some moved by the same mighty hand that had closed it. How glad everybody must have how glad everybody must have been to step outside and breathe the sweet fresh air again. So thankful was Noah for the way God had saved him and his family from the flood that the very first thing he did as he went ashore was to build an altar and offer in an offer in sacrifice upon it offer in sacrifice upon it at least one of every clean bees and every clean fowl. Uh, King James again. And that was the real, a real sacrifice just then when the only animals in the whole wide world were those he had brought with him in the ark. God was so pleased that Noah had remembered to say thank you for his deliverance that he said, I will not again curse the ground anymore. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Oh, King James. Now, at God's command, all of the other birds, the bees, were released. What a sight that must have been. World, what a whirling of wings as great eagles, storks, herons, and flamingos leap into the air and flew out to freedom with robins, sparrows, thrushes, and L-I-N-N-E-T-Y-L-I-N-N-E-T-Y-L-I-N-N-E-T-Y-L-I-N-N-E-T-Y-L-I-N-N-E-T-Y-L-I-N-N-E-T-Y-L-I-N-N-E-
Many of the animals disappeared at once, racing down the mountainside until they were out of sight. Others stayed around like human companions. Wait. Others stayed around like human companionship, and Noah may well have wondered what he would do with so many if he so many if they continued to stay near the ark. But two by two and group by group, they began to move away, wandering north, south, east, west, seeking food and shelter. At last, only some of the cows, sheep, goats, and of course, the little dogs and cats were left. Noah, no, meanwhile, Noah and his family were looking around at the wild looking place to which the ark had brought. And then we have an illustration down at the bottom. I'm doing the sacrifice at, the, at an altar, which is just a stone thing. See. Meanwhile, Noah and his family were looking around at the wild looking place to which the ark had brought them. It was a sad sight to at it was a sad sight that met their gaze. Everywhere was wrecked and ruined caused by the raging waters. Great trees laid uprooted, lovely hills had been swept clean of soil, leaving nothing but bare rock. Mountains had become scarred and jagged, and once fruit, the fruitful plain was a desert, or desert. Not a single human dwell dwelling was to be seen anywhere. Of all the beautiful homes they remembered, no trace remained. All had been smashed to matchwood by the towering tidal waves that swept over everything when the flood began. It was enough to break their hearts. As they stood there viewing the desolate scene, they felt an earth, the earth shake underneath them, for there must have been many quakes as the earth settled after a great eruption, after the great eruptions when all the fountains of the deep were broken up. No doubt they felt afraid and lonely on the shuttered mountainside. Well, may they have wondered what terrible thing was going to happen next. Then, all of a sudden, Noah looked upward, and there, in the sky, he saw something he had never seen before. As though trying to encircle the ruined earth with arms of love, with a glorious, glowing arch of many colors. Glowing arc of many colors. Scared. S -A -S -C -A -R -C -E. Scarce. Scarce daring to breathe. They all stood looking up at it. Struck dumb with amazement. What is it? What? Could it be me? It was the first rainbow. And they watched in wonderment. God drew near and said, You do set my, I do set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall 
come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud and I will remain and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh oh King James again and the bow shall be in the cloud and I and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God between God and every living creature of all flesh upon the earth it was God's way of saying I have not forgotten you nor shall I never forget you or my promise to you when you see the rainbow and I see the rainbow we will remember each other only a God of love could have brought could have thought of speaking to his children in such a way at such a time having lost everything money home they all save lot all save life itself and what they had brought with them in the ark these poor homeless pilgrims surely needed a message of comfort and hope should such as it as this Ugh, my mind is going everywhere but now our hearts cheered but now their hearts cheered, their courage renewed. They took themselves, they told themselves again that all would be well at last. How good to know that God was still with them, that God still loved them. And so, hand in hand with Him, they went forth throughout the shiny ark above them to build a new world with him and then of course the illusion is a two-pager and this is the group and then it travels to the other side and then we turn the page and that was Part 3, Story 6. Now we go to the next one.